Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. Today's show is all about fabric. Mmm, love my fabric. <laughs> what are you making today? Today I'm making a fabric journal and wait till you see what's the base. And Candace Jedrowitz is creating with fabric in an unusual way. She's creating a fabric postcard. I am decorating up fabric with tulips, beads in a bottle, and it's a jewelry pouch. It's all fabulous, so don't go away. You know, there's something about fabric. Whenever you say the word, or Heidi says, let's go to the fabric store, it just makes my heart sing. <laughs> I'm the same way. You can't get me out of the fabric store without buying something. I have to buy something. What is it about fabric that does that? For me, it's the textures, it's the patterns, it's the colors. There's just, I don't know, <laughs> just something about it. Uh, Heidi's so cute because with <laughs> buttons, she collects <laughs> buttons, but she doesn't want to let her buttons go. I think she's the same with fabric. I am. I'm totally the same. It's something about the color and the texture. It just it just says, wow, you got to keep me. I think that there's a lot of people who are like that. You know, quilters, of course, they will mm -hmm. buy more and more and more fat quarters. And you can go into their studios and they have stacks and stacks of fabric. And most of us that buy fabric probably don't even have a reason of why we're going to buy it. <laughs> don't you think? Who needs a reason? <laughs> why would you need a reason? <laughs> I wish that I was a little bit more neat on my fabric. My fabric just goes into boxes. I've seen so many people that they stack them up on a shelf and they get to see all the colors and have to do that someday but well and of course they tease you completely when you go into the fabric store because they have them color coordinated mm -hmm. and that makes you want more and more <laughs> and more they do it right because I do want more <laughs> <laughs> and I grew up watching Heidi sew mm -hmm. so you were the one who inspired me I wanted a sewing machine I think it was about the seventh grade when I got my first sewing machine. That's when I got mine. Was it? And mm -hmm. you still have yours. I still have mine. It's um, pretty beat up and I've gotten sewing machines in between and I just love it. So we're going to we're gonna give a plug to Singer today because it's a Singer <laughs> sewing machine. A very old one. And it keeps going and going and going. Yes, it and does. And my first sewing machine was a Singer also. And what are you doing? You're giving up some of your fabric today. I know. What are you going to make? I know. <laughs> Um, you know, it was kind of funny about this project because when I originally told you what I was going to do, I told you two pic I showed you two pictures and I'm like, I'm going to do this one. Well, I decided to put both the techniques together um, and we'll show, um, I want to show those pictures right now. Mm -hmm. The first one has four hearts that are in a shadow box and they're all fabric on uh, playing cards. And then the second one has where I took scrapbooking paper and I stitched over the fabric and the yarn with my sewing machine and then I have a clay heart. I love both of them. They both have sold <laughs> for in my sister Candace's shop. So I decided to put both those techniques because they're really cool. I'm using cereal box and I'm using playing cards. So let me show you what I did. To make the journal, it, there's just a couple of uh, items that you need. You're going to need some cereal board cardboard, and this is five and a half by five and a half. You need two pieces, and you're going to need to cut some paper that's five and a half by five and a quarter. So when it goes into the book, a little bit shorter this way. And I took and put my clear ruler a half inch from the edge and I used a stylus and a stylus is has a little ball on the end of it and helps you to create a fold. So you hold that tight against the ruler and you score it so that you have a fold and that'll make it so that you can open your journal up really, really nice. Now my holes are half inch in on each side and then I divided the other three evenly in between and you want to punch both of your your cover and your back and all of the papers that are going to go inside. So I'm going to put that aside for a second and we're going to work on our front of our journal. You're actually going to need four pieces like this at approximately seven and a half by seven and a half. This 
this piece is going to be for our cover. And then you're going to just need some scraps of fabric, some felt, some yarn pieces, just scraps. And I'm using, just to glue the pieces on, just for placement, I'm, I'm using the fabric, the Aleem's Fabric Fusion. And just put a little bit on. And be sure you test your fabric to make sure that it won't mar the fabric. I just squeeze it, squeegee it on with a piece of cardboard. And I found that this glue did not gum up my needle, and I like that. And another piece. One's going across the top. And we are ready to sew, so let's go to the sewing machine. First stitch we're going to do with this pretty yarn here is a, is a zigzag. And my trusty old Singer machine. We're going to zigzag the um, yarn to be right across the fabric. Didn't quite get it. There we go. This yarn has a little bit of stretch to it. Cut off the ends to be even with your fabric. And the next one we're going to sew on is this other strip here and we're going to do a straight stitch. And we're going to gather pieces of the yarn together underneath the stitch. it off. And there is the start of my cover. We have one more piece to sew and that's the felt piece for the, the words. Thank you. 
cut the threads. Next thing I want to do on the back of my fabric, the back piece, and on the front side of the fabric is I'm actually going to draw a line. This is going to be my stitching line to put the piece together. And we're actually going to stitch right on that line so it won't show. First, we're going to make sure that it's going to get what I want. Okay, back to the sewing machine. So we want to make sure that we keep the side over here open. So we're going to go down right on the line. Remember the one we just drew? And straight stitch three on three sides now we're going to take one of our um, pieces of cardboard that we already shaped on the ends and we're going to slip it inside where we just stitched we stitched three sides Stick that in, make sure it's all the way down. And we're going to stitch the last side closed. Now remember too that this is the edge that has my um, paper punch. That's where we're going to put it together. So now we're ready to put the journal together and I have my top piece that we just stitched and in between I have my papers and then I have my back piece. Now I have marked all my holes and I've threaded a needle and I'm going to come up, go through the holes, all the paper, and then go into the hole in the front. Leave maybe about 12 inches. Come through the back. Go through all the holes. And here's where we're going to tie our ribbon. And you could put beads on here if you want. Now this is ready for our letters. So we would glue our letters on. This one is going to be joy. The other one I had was love. And for our other decoration, I have already stitched fabric to pieces of fabric and a piece of felt onto a playing card. So I'm going to place that and glue that down like so. And then what I did is I would paint one of these uh, cool to cast pieces and that would go right on there. And this is the one before with the cool to cast piece. So I have love and I have joy. What I love about your project, Heidi, is how you have made it so much of a mixed media piece. Definitely. The, the cardboard stitched in between and the playing card and then I also have the cool to cast piece. Lots of different things. Cool to cast. <laughs> yes, you know, <laughs> that's, on the, on the that's my favorite. Adorable. I love all the colors. I just love it. It's mine. <laughs>
No, wait. <laughs> no, wait. It's mine. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to make more for my sisters. For you and my I, sister. You, me, and your sister. Wait a minute. I am your sister. I know, but my other sister. Okay, there you go. And my other one. And my other one. <laughs> I have lots of adopted sisters. <laughs> Candace Jedrowitz is creating sister. is an adopted <laughs> sister. Candace is creating today with fabric because it's a fabric themed show. And she's doing something I didn't even know you could do. I didn't know it was legal. <laughs> <gasps> so well, oh my gosh, she you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna wonder what we how we're introducing Candace. So what she found out is you can actually mail fabric postcards. So she went to the post office with this project, I guess, and mailed it. Mm -hmm. So, do you want me to introduce her? Oh, let me. No, I want to. Oh, we can do it together. No, maybe. Okay, here. how are we gonna do that? <laughs> you say, say, here's Candace Jedrowitz. Here's, here's Candace, Candace Jedrowitz. Am I gonna have to separate you two? <laughs> you guys are so cute together. Hi everybody, and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really cool fabric reusable mail art piece. You will need to start with two postcards and you're going to glue them together. I'm going to use the quick dry tacky glue by Aline's. And I'm gonna squeeze it on and spread it. The object is to make this as stiff as possible. One side will have fabric and the other side will have paper. And then there'll be another layer of fabric behind the second layer of paper. Go out to the edges. And then line up your cards the best you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay, that's good enough. And now I'm going to spread more glue on and get the fabric on it. This fabric looks magical to me. That feels pretty good. Now let's trim this fabric. And you want to bring in your fabric for the outside which is 10 and a half by six inches. I wanted to leave a lot of space and I think you will too when you see what goes on. So to figure out how much of a fold I need, I'm just gonna iron it right on the card. Here's where you want this fold to be as straight as possible because you will need for this to come to the top and bottom edges of your postcard and the ends will fold around and so if there's a, a slope like it looks this like this looks like it's gotten a little bit narrower at this end it won't match up. So let's redo this one. So now you'll want to double check, put your postcard back in. That looks good. Now let's use a little more of the Aline's Quick Dry Tacky Glue. I glued myself to the material. Fold it down and give it a good pressing. 
Let's bring the postcard over. And you will want to fold the edges in to see how much of a seam you'll want. And it looks like you will probably need half inch maybe. You need to leave enough room in the middle for the mail to be hand stamped. First, before you do that, you'll want to glue this into the envelope. I'm using white for this, the plain card backing instead of another material because sometimes when the glue wets the material, you can see through it and even when it dries, you can still see whatever color is behind it through it. We want to line it up. That looks pretty good. So that's glued in. Now let's press our seams. You could measure and mark if you so desired. Oh, we are flying now. You can see that from the glue, the card is starting to curl up a little bit. You can flatten that out, no problem. The last bit of glue is going to form the envelope part on the front. So we only want to glue the outer edges. This is probably the only really precise part about this. Everything else can be winged. Line it up and press it into place. There, isn't that lovely? Now, for the postcard, you know you're not going to be able to use the full size, so you could cut this, but I do prefer, prefer to tear. I love torn edges, and you could even touch them up with a little bit of stamping ink if you'd like. I'm just kind of estimating how much room the glue takes up inside of here. And then you test it. All right, that's going to fit. So you'll write your message. You will turn it over, put it in. Ah! Oh, I should have let that dry a little bit longer. I may need to add a little bit more too, and that'll be okay. But you don't want to leave your paper in there while you're drying. So. The very last thing is to see where you can touch things up. What will make it shine? I think that I could do some dimensional cups here. I've got a little bit of clear dimensional glue. And I'm just going to put a little on these adorable cups. But you could use glitter glue if you wanted. You could paint on the fabric. There's lots of things that you could do. You are only limited by your imagination. This project was quick and easy. I hope that you're inspired to try something like it. And I hope that if you do, I get to see it. 
You can email me with your projects at Candace at CoolToCraft.com anytime. I would love to hear from you and see what you're doing. That's all for now. Stay crafty, my friends. So there you have it. Candace Jedrowitz has just given us permission to mail fabric. I think that's pretty cool. I'm hearing bells in my head today. No, it's kind of like a bong. Are you hearing bells in your head? <laughs> there's, there's like a bong. <laughs> Is that what it sounds? It's not really bells. That's it's not, like That's not bong. the sound I'm hearing. What did you hear? <laughs> Actually, I I hung up my tuned wind chimes right outside the studio. They're tuned. They're tuned. I had no idea. They're actually tuned. They're mm. they're created so that they create certain music bong. at a certain note. <laughs> I don't think it sounds like that. So if you're hearing a bong <laughs> on the video, <laughs> it's not just in my head. It's in your head too. So the, I, I kept saying, Heidi, what am I hearing? What am I hearing? And it's the bong outside. No, it's the tune. The bong. <laughs> able to introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> be... Keep going. Okay, we're not stopping the tape. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You're okay. Everybody the wrong idea. I know. It's the know. wind chime. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so for my project today, I dug into my fabric stash and found, what kind of fabric is this? It's kind of a satin or a sateen. And what I found is that it works really great with iron on fusible web and then the tulip beads in a bottle. And I had a lot of fun creating this actually recently for a blog hop. So today I'm going to try and show you how I made it if I can stop laughing here. <laughs> And uh, I, I think it's it. really super cool. So this is what I've crafted. You'll see in, in my demo that I've crafted up a jewelry pouch. So here's Tiffany. For your jewelry pouch, you will need several different types of fabric. This is a great project if you'd like to use some of your leftover fabric scraps. You can piece them together for the actual pouch. You can use scraps for the contrasting color. You need a good pair of scissors, a pencil, iron-on fusible web, and I just used some bottles that were on my desk for patterns for circles, for different sizes of circles. You could certainly use any sort of circle template that you have. And I am finishing my jewelry pouch with the tulip beads in a bottle. So the first step is to create your base for your pouch. So I simply cut my pouch to my desired size, put my fabric right sides together, turned it inside out, ironed it, stitch up a couple of pouches here, and what I want to show you is how to actually decorate the front. I'm going to pull in my ironing mat so that will be ready when we are ready to iron. And as I mentioned, I'm just using some bottles that I have on my desk for a pattern for circles. You could use your die cutter to cut some really cool designs to do any motif that you'd like to. And cut out your pattern. I liked this particular pattern. It was very contemporary, just some circles to create the essence of flowers. And what I did, of course, is I ironed on that 
fusible web before I cut. So the fusible web should be, nope, this one still needs to be ironed. I was going to say it should be on that fabric, but I can see that it didn't iron completely. Let me check all of these now. I'm going to give them a real quick ironing here. We want to make sure that that fusible webbing adheres to the back of that fabric. All right, this looks okay. Okay, cool. So I'm putting this design on the front of my pouch. Peel the backing paper off the fusible web, which is very well adhered now that I've just re-ironed it. Here's a little hint for you. If you have a challenge getting the paper to start to release, pull it so that it tears just a little bit and then it's easier to grab. Or not. <laughs> There we go. Help, it's sticking to me. A lot of static electricity in that paper tonight. One more. Let's see if I can get this one off easily. All right. I want to keep this bottom design a little bit up from the edge because we're going to put the stems on it. And I like to have a little bit of room in between each of the flowers for my beads in a bottle. You might want to use a pressing cloth for this step depending on the type of fabric that you're using, but you can see how quickly it irons in place. I offset the centers just a little bit. Again, it's a very contemporary design for these. For the stems, I just cut my straight pieces here. Determine the length. Go ahead and cut them to the right length. I want that centered just a little bit more. Let's move that because once these are ironed down, they are permanent. Last one, just a quick measurement. All right, so I have stitched together the jewelry pouch and now we are decorating the cover and it's very pretty just like that but I wanted to add a little bit more dimension so I am using the tulip beads in a bottle what you want to do with these to begin with is let's see if I have a piece of test paper here is practice just a little bit because it's a very straight up and down motion to create your little bead so we're going to practice first. 
get a feel for the flow. And these come to a little bit of a peak when they first come out of the bottle and then they will round out so it gives you a beautiful effect of a real bead. So I'm ready to go on to my pouch. Be sure you give yourself enough space in between each of your beads so as they settle that they don't touch each other. I like to turn my piece so I don't end up putting my finger back into the paint that I've already applied. If you go back and take a look here at the first beads that I applied, they are already starting to settle right down and look like they are rounded and give you the effect that you've actually riveted these in place or ironed them in place. For my centers, I just use my gold beads in a bottle, same way. I love the metallic look. My base fabric is a sateen and so it's shiny and putting these metallic colors of beads in a bottle on top of this shiny fabric. I love it, love it, love it. I think I can fit one more right there. I'm going to continue adding the beads. So I am just finishing up the last center on my last flower and what you want to do is to let this set undisturbed overnight to dry completely. Let me pull this here so you can see all of the design. Let this set undisturbed overnight so that these can dry completely and you do want to be sure if you're going to be doing this technique on any sort of wearable that you do pre-wash the fabric and always when you're using any sort of fabric paint like this don't use any fabric softener in the wash or the dryer so let this dry the package says four hours but I would let it dry overnight and then if you have a washable fabric it can be washed you just turn it inside out and you can wash it after 72 hours, but on my little jewelry pouch, I would not have a reason to want to wash this. I've selected a fabric that is not washable. So that is how you create your own contemporary metallic designs on a jewelry pouch. I love creating with fabric. So Heidi, have you tried the beads in a bottle yet? I have not tried them yet. Are you going to? I am. I love this. I love, I, you know, I watched her when she was making this originally and I I'm just was like, wow. And I kept checking it too. I kept coming in and checking it. Oh, that's really cool. I love the design, the simplicity of it. And you did good. These, thank you. <laughs> and these beads in a bottle come in lots of different colors and there's glitter and there's the type that I use that it's are metallic, more metallic yeah. and then the regular colors. Mm -hmm. So I, I keep getting hooked on crafts lately. Each time when I come on air I say, oh my gosh, I'm addicted to this now and I'm addicted to that. This is another one of those crafts. Actually, it's very meditative when you make those mm -hmm. little dots for the beads. 
I know how that meditation thing is with crafts because I've been doing it with painting bisque. Mm -hmm. You have. I can't wait till we can share that with everyone. <laughs> what I want to do before we say goodbye today is to do a wrap up and let everyone know what we created. And okay. so it's you first. Okay. I did a uh, fabric journal on cereal boxes and my, de my designs or my mixed media was um, a cool to cast piece, a heart, and also I did it with a playing card too. I built up my fabric on a playing card. Really cool. And Candace Jesuit shared how to create a fabric postcard. Great way to use fabric, fun way to send postcards to your friends and family and creative girlfriends and whomever. I think it's a fabulous idea. And I created a jewelry pouch that I ironed on fabric circles and then used my tulip beads in a bottle to create this uh, jewelry pouch. And in between all of this, we got to listen to the new wind chime that's tuned. Who would have thought? I didn't know you didn't know that was a tuned wind chime. You had never heard I've of never that? I've never even heard of that. Oh gosh, and did you see how big they are? They're, they're huge. about, I don't know, three or four feet yeah, tall. Yeah, they're huge. And they're very pretty, but... And it gave us a good laugh today. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? So I'll happy never, to entertain you. I'll never think about that wind time the same way. Bong. <laughs> <laughs> I want to invite you to join us at Facebook. You will go to facebook.com slash cool to craft and click on like us if you have not already done so. And we always encourage you to head on over there after you watch the show every Monday and leave your comments. Oh, oh can I say something? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> Don't forget to go to shopcooltocraft.com because we have fabulous products there. The cool to cast, we've, we've already shaped them for you. We've already, already molded them for you. Some of them are painted. There's all kinds of cool things there on shopcooltocraft.com. Well, that was a nice plug. Yeah, thank you. Were you going to say that? Uh, I, no, no, that was, <laughs> that was your line. I also want to invite you to sign up for our newsletter. Every Tuesday, we have a new newsletter. That's the Cool to Craft newsletter at Fave Crafts. So you can go to cooltocraft.com, and in the upper right-hand corner on our home page, you will see the little picture that says sign up for our newsletter. It's pretty easy. You just <laughs> click on that. So what that means is everything you saw on here today will be on the newsletter tomorrow right? with and, tutorials. And you have to sign up because if you don't sign up today, you'll miss tomorrow's newsletter. There's not an archive of the newsletter. You can't go back and see it. Mm -mm. And so you need to sign up today. And also, what else will they find? Since you're so chatty today, <laughs> what else will they find at cooltocraft.com? Oh, um, tutorials. Um, 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 help me out, help me out, help me out. <laughs> will they find your blog there? Um... No. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> we keep on promising it, but she's keeping me too busy. Uh -huh. <laughs> excuses, excuses. What you will find there at Cool to Craft is maybe a blog by Heidi. <laughs> You will find, I don't know if you're going to find that, but you will find our idea gallery, which are the project instructions. Do you know when we put up our project instructions, we do a whole photo tutorial? That means 10 plus photos. Sometimes it's 20 photos step by step. Mm -hmm. So if you prefer to watch our demonstrations on video, you can do that. Or if you like to print them out and have the photo tutorials, we have that available. Giveaways, you can always check out and see what current giveaways that there are on the website. Mm -hmm. And all the archive shows are on the website too, so anything that you haven't seen for how long? How long are the archives on there? They're forever. No, but how long have you go back? What are you trying to say? <laughs> what are you trying to say here? Like, how many are on oh, there? Oh, well, you can hundreds. go back hundreds. You, hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> I think I'm answering your question. I'm sorry. I'm focusing on the bong outside. <laughs> So, I, is that it? I Have we done all, all of today. our announcements and all of our craziness? And this is what it's like to craft with your sister <laughs> and cra laugh and craft with your sister and sisters. All of you are sisters out there. So, we now get to say goodbye. Right, and we're going to see you next time on Cool Craft. So, get creative, get inspired, and be, be cool. cool. Bye. Bye.